All right, guys, welcome to Friday morning. Getting ready for week six of the NFL 2020 season. This is the Fantasy Football Astrology Channel. I got a lot of questions pouring in and uh, see if I can get some of these answered via this video here. And uh, one interesting thing I wanted to talk about coming in from Tyke68. He says he needs help from our community. He needs help from the fantasy football astrology community. He wants to know, should he trade? He has Cooper Cup, and he wants to know, should he trade for Miles Gaskin? So anytime we're analyzing these types of things, we always are wanting to understand the situation with the league, of course. You want to know what's the roster uh, construction in his league he can have up to three wide receivers and a flex spot still so that really speaks to uh, wide receivers having a bit more value than usual obviously right so it's a tough trade uh, miles gaskin is an interesting player that right now i i think this is speaking to a uh, uh, an interesting pivot that we need to make with Miles Gaskin in our perception of him. Before I was discussing uh, for people to trade away Miles Gaskin because he wasn't getting that red zone usage and he was getting a ton of usage elsewhere and being pretty efficient with things. And so this Miami Dolphins team in general is a team that is a, uh, the perception on this team is beginning to shift quite a bit. Uh, we're seeing that these guys actually have quite a nice array of defensive backs. We know that Brian Flores comes from the Belichick thought process where you want to build out your defensive backs on the defense as really the focal point to making your defense strong, and he's done so. They've got a bunch of playmakers. Uh, you know, they've got, uh, who is it, uh, Byron Jones and Xavier uh, Howard and they got that Ig Mahogany guy I don't know how to say his name Ig Iganogany or something like that he seems to be like he plays pretty good ball here and there playing some good coverage skills and so they were able to create a lot of turnovers last week and uh, Fitzpatrick has been uh, pretty dang uh, effective as of late and here's the thing with Miles Gaskin he got seven red zone touches last week. That was tied for the second highest in the NFL. Now that game script uh, was a super ideal game script in that they were uh, really getting a lot of favorable, uh, how do you say, um, positioning on the field, right? They were causing a lot of like three and outs and uh, getting uh, turnovers, a couple of picks from Garoppolo coming in early. And so, but still, the fact that Miles Gaskin is getting red zone touches completely changes the way we need to be perceiving Miles Gaskin. And, and maybe he's this guy that, you know, we, for so long we were cold on him and we need to, we need to pivot really fast right now to see uh, or to take advantage uh, of what his value is trending towards before the other owners are getting uh, are aware of what's going on with him. Like we're seeing with Tyke68, he's saying that his, uh, somebody wants to trade this Gaskin guy away. And really now is the time to buy on Gaskin. I don't know if I could trade Cup, Cooper Cup for that. That, that does seem a little steep to me. But gosh, you know, um, looking at your roster construction, you, you have a lot of good backs. You got to kind of wait for a couple of these guys to come back from injury, but you're, you're still pretty strong there. Uh, I don't think I would be able to do that trade, but uh, I hope the rest of the community chimes in, lets you know what they think. Um, and I would say for this video and for people watching and listening, Miles Gaskin is a really good kind of buy low candidate right now uh of course uh you don't want to give up too much for him but hey man there it is miles gaskin really nice target uh for the trades and um and so that's that
moving on to the next question. Oh, also Tech Baby wants everybody to know Matthew Stafford has a really nice schedule coming up and he's a really excellent uh, quarterback to pick up before he gets too hot. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Stafford last year was uh, one of the, he was in the top six quarterbacks when he was really rolling. And as Galladay gets further away from that hamstring injury, uh, we can kind of expect that Stafford is going to be getting pretty hot here with this favorable schedule. And so nice other little tip there. Check out Stafford. Check out his schedule. I know I picked him up in my league as a, a second quarterback. I'll be kind of probably flopping him and Roethlisberger depending on matchups and injuries and, and whatnot. So uh, that's what I'm doing there. Uh, I'm high on Stafford as well. And so that is another little tidbit. Another quarterback that George Gallo is talking about, he says he thinks that Kirk Cousins is a great streaming option this week, and I agree. Cook's out. And so that Atlanta defense is a really good matchup. Uh, Kirk Cousins always seems to be able to bounce back. I don't, uh, I don't know what it is with Minnesota. Um, they... They seem to want to lean so heavily on their run game that they, they forget how to like really construct a, a potent passing offense, but then they bounce back and, and they start favoring the pass game. So I do expect a strong bounce back week uh, from the Vikings. Of course, it was raining last week too. So that always is going to game plan towards running the ball a lot. Uh, we know that. So... Another question coming in from Nikhil Patel. He wants to know, should he trade Edmonds for Gibson? Now, what do you guys think? I say, absolutely, do that trade. I still expect Gibson to be getting stronger as the year goes. Uh, he still looks like he's been really efficient with the touches he's gotten. And uh, the Washington offense last week was quite crippled with uh, them not being able to get the ball out to McLaurin. You know, drawing the coverage of Ramsey was a, proved to be a really challenging week. And so I would still trade Gibson for Edmonds. And here's the thing, guys. Everyone's – some people are saying trade high on Drake right now. Uh, he's still getting a lot of carries. And to me, he looks like he's getting more and more into himself this year. Uh, I think his body's – getting more acclimated uh, athletically as the season goes, as far as I can tell. And so I think Drake is going to start showing why he was drafted so high. So I'm, hold, I'm still holding on Drake. I'm actually going to put him in my starting lineup this week. And uh, so just kind of my thoughts there. Uh, Goshan Beats wants to know, hey, Le'Veon Bell is now in Kansas City. What does this mean for Clyde Edwards-Alaire? And here's another good buy low candidate. I think Clyde Edwards-Alaire is uh, he's still uh, going to profile to be the number one running back in that offense. I see Le'Veon Bell maybe scooping in like uh, Darrell Williams was scooping in there and, and taking some touches here and there. But other than that, I don't really see Le'Veon Bell as uh, taking over any role there. It's hard to tell, really, honestly. But uh, Le'Veon Le Bell's been um, struggling with efficiency for quite some time. Uh, we, can, we can pretty much say that a lot of his success was from that excellent Pittsburgh Steelers offense and that ex excellent Pittsburgh Steelers run blocking. Uh, pretty much everybody was getting it done there. So... Um, Clyde Edwards Alaire, another good buy low candidate. And uh, we'll see if I have any more questions in here that I missed. Um, Tyke wants to know if he should trade, instead of trading Cup for Gaskin, should he trade Cup for Gallup and Swift? I really like that move. Uh, those are, uh, like I've said before, Gallup has excellent astrology with Andy Dalton. And we saw him already get an increased usage in that short time period with Andy Dalton behind center. And Swift is, he's got great astrology with his coaches. They all share the earth element. 
Looks like Adrian Peterson was out on an illness. So it could be as early as this week that we start seeing Swift get more usage. I know there's a lot of crying coming out of Detroit saying you guys aren't using Swift. You guys aren't using Hawkinson. Get it together, guys. And so, you know, if the, the basic fans are, are seeing that and the hardcore fans are talking about that, you know, we saw that happen more recently with Joe Mixon. Everyone's saying quit using Giovanni Bernard in the passing game. You know, I, I heard that they were blowing up that uh, – they were blowing up Zach Taylor's uh, Twitter feed or his whatever, his uh, Instagram or something saying, get Joe Mixon in the passing game. He's the, he's the better athlete. What are you doing? And now we've seen two weeks straight where Joe Mixon is getting used in the passing game. So Joe Mixon is another guy I'd love to get my hands on. The price is going to be a bit steeper there, obviously, but he didn't have that big of a week last week. And so if the owners think he might continue struggling, they might be able to willing be willing to move on a Joe Mixon. Uh, another guy I'm, I'm really concerned about right now is Michael Thomas. I'm considering moving Michael Thomas. Um, I don't know how many strikes we need with this guy. He had a really poor performance before he went out with injury. Drew Brees has looked pretty dang bad, and guess what? Emmanuel Sanders is really starting to get the trust of Drew Brees. He's been using Traquan Swift. He's been using Emmanuel Sanders. And it seems like the trust there has really grown over the weeks. And so can we really expect Michael Thomas to be hogging all the targets again this year? They're using Kamara a lot more this year. And so if we could sell like a Michael Thomas for like a mix-in and a gallop, Dang, that's a trade I would be really interested in. Just a couple of my thoughts, guys. Uh, uh, trying to keep us all uh, thinking about different things. And um, thanks for commenting in my videos here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.